Hi, hi everybody. I'm, I'm Colin Gravel. Um, I work on uh, uh, scientific software, so this kind of puts a lot more impact on the kind of code you're trying to run. So we're trying to take computationally intensive software and we're trying to put it into the client side as well. Now, a lot of times it makes sense, you put it on the server, uh, but for some of the tools we're building, we're either giving them away free or it just makes more sense to get that compute close to the, close to the place where the people are working. So I work at Microsoft Research, we work on biology, trying to understand it, and so as well as the software that I'm going to talk about here, uh, we also have a lot of wetware. Um, so uh, I'm going straight in, this is a lightning talk, so I'm not going to mess around. Uh, we've got a counter, um, which most of you have probably built yourself already, so it works, it's great. Um, you've probably also had this experience of you've, you've built an application, you've shipped it to your customer, they're happily doing things, and then a project manager or user comes to you with a new suggestion, something else that they want to happen. So this is a kind of um, arbitrary thing. Um, what, what I've been asked to do is uh, calculate the prime factors of the number off the counter of what you're trying to run here. So I can code this up. Um, obviously, I just found some code on Stack Overflow, copied and pasted it into Fable. It all just works. It runs through fine. So I've calculated the prime factors. It's not too interesting, um, but it's OK. We, we've shipped it to our, our users. They're happy. Um, I don't know if you have the same kind of users as I have, but they either ignore what you build them because it's not what they need, or they use it in very extreme ways. Um, so they've been counting pretty high. And this, this is still OK. We can still calculate um, prime factors uh, without running into too much problems. Um, but then they go a little bit too far. Um, they've counted really, really high. So we've got five quintillion uh, numbers. And so once the users start uh, interacting with things like this, um, we get into a problem um, that we run the code, um, it's chugging away, they're not getting the answers. They're, they're patient though, they'll, they'll wait for a little bit. But they're not gonna wait forever. And in the case like this, if we've not written some very good code, um, it's certainly gonna take a very long time. So uh, they're not happy with this, um, because while this is running, they also can't interact with the counter anymore. And this, this, is, this is not what, what they like doing. So one answer is, um, and because I've locked up the browser, I now need to restart. So one answer is, can't you just write better code? Can't you be a better programmer? Now, I don't want to focus too much on the particular example of calculating prime factors. It's a very arbitrary example. So instead, going for a, a, a slightly more abstract, ab abstract system. So all this is doing here is doing for loops. Uh, it's uh, counting every so often. It's written in kind of Elmish style, so it'll dispatch the outputs uh, when it's uh, ready. Uh, I'm just also going to bring up the, the browser console so that can see a little better what's going on. Uh, so I, I can click this button down here. It's doing this expensive calculation. You don't really need to see it in detail, but you can, um, it's chugging it through. But we're not, we're not getting our outputs here. So this is really annoying. And so for people who aren't kind of aware of what's going on on the JavaScript side, then everything's being run on the primary UI thread. So nothing's happening. It's not writing any, anything back because you, you've locked it up with this calculation. But again, can, can deal with this. Um, we, we know how to cope with this as kind of F-sharp programmers. That the general answer is that we can use asyncs. So we've got a synthetic problem, but instead we're going to use an async here. So OK, th let's see how this goes. And I click it, and it's chugging away. We're producing answers as we go. So uh, we've now kind of achieved what we want to. There's a bit of a snag here. We're still running on the UI thread. We're still sharing our time with the, the, the main um, side of the system. And also, there's another problem. This is, this is really, really slow. Um, it looked OK because it was producing answers. But if we compare it to another approach, which I'll show you in a second, we're not getting nearly the same performance we ought to be getting. So what we really want to do is use this technology called web workers. So for people who aren't familiar with this, uh, don't necessarily work in the uh, web space unless they're under duress, then a web worker is a bit like a separate process. Some people talk about it as threading. I prefer to talk about it as processes because you don't tend to have shared memory, and so you need to be a bit more conscious of like, passing uh, resources between them. So we can write our code here. Uh, we've got the same, same uh, 
calculation inside. We're just doing a for loop, so a very synthetic example. Uh, but what we can do is post back messages from this other process. So we've written this in F-sharp still. We're not having to manually write JavaScript. But we've got this function that all it does is, when it's sent messages, it can, it'll start off ticking away. It'll post a message to say it's started. And then it'll, it'll go through this loop and send things back. Now, there's a technique. Uh, some people use this in JavaScript as well. Um, and it's really nice that because um, uh, we're living in, in the JavaScript space, we can take the same kind of approach. All I've done here is I've, I've taken the two string of the function. And what this does is gives you the, the text of that function itself. Um, you can then take that in uh, JavaScript, and you can create a, a, a kind of blob or a resource which corresponds to that, that code and feed it into a web worker. So you're basically saying, create me this new process with this um, resource as the code to run inside it. Now, what I've done is I, I did tack on a little bit like um, JavaScript does, like immediately executing the function. There's other ways to do this, but this is a direct way. But we can then move down here. And when we get the results back, we can then push it back and tell it that we've, we've, we've got our results and that we're happy. So I'm just going to restart this, because there's some state from the previous example. Now, if you compare it to the other one that took a few seconds, like tick through and show things, this is basically instantaneous. And so what you're getting is the full speed of not only you've got a dedicated core, because like most machines, even uh, low-price uh, phones, they've got multiple cores in them, then you've got exclusive access. So all you're doing is spending your time chugging away. And so if you want to be doing kind of high-performance computation, like doing analysis or, or even plotting or something like that, you want to be able to occupy the core as much as possible. So this is a way that you can pretty much write F-sharp code. Um, I do have a note here that what we're doing here, it doesn't, it doesn't trace through your function. So what you have to do is arrange for your code to exist on the web worker as well. And so the easiest way i found to do that is set up a separate um, webpack command to take the code which corresponds to your compute side rather than your UI side. Now, I do have some fun ideas that you might be able to do this. Of, um, this is like a full editor. You could also host uh, Fable inside here as well. So you could, uh, uh, a bit like the REPL, you could spin up your code and then do it on the fly, which would make it a lot more flexible. It would also be quite cool uh, to put more technology in here, something like um, one of the remoting technologies, um, so that you could uh, share in a type safe way between your uh, web worker and your main UI code as well. Um, but some of these might require some changes on the Fable side to make it really slick. But it's definitely possible already. OK, so you can use more of your cores. You can also spin up multiple web workers. But one of the other problems that JavaScript has is, although it can be fast, it's unpredictable. So you can also have situations where you write some JavaScript, it's slow, your resident expert on one of the given browsers alters it so it goes fast, and it goes faster on that browser and slow on other browsers. And so we found this as a pain. I have a particular case where it goes, I have a different optimal version for different browsers, and I really don't want to be browser sniffing to figure out which piece of script to send to each browser to make it go fast. So this is um, a, a technology under development called WebAssembly, which I guess most of you have heard of. And while I'd love to be able to write all my code in F-sharp and make all the rest of the world write, rewrite all their code in F-sharp, then there's other code bases that I want to make use of that I want to run on the client side for analysis of DNA structures or any number of applications that I want to push onto the client side for cost or convenience reasons, but I don't want to have to rewrite it. And so there's a number of tools. So what I've got here is some C code. And there's a tool called Inscripton, which will take your C code It'll then push it through uh, LLVM, and it'll push out some WebAssembly, and it'll also push out a JavaScript helper file. So there's some really cool stuff in uh, Fable that lets you just point out uh, modules. And so what, what I'm going to do here is I've got this, again, another synthetic example of calculating a Fibonacci sequence. And what I can do is I can easily wrap that with F-sharp code and then make it available to Fable. And what I've included here is the um, TypeScript code that I used elsewhere. And this is one of the really nice things about Fable, that you can take all the experience and skills and documentation, importantly, that exist in JavaScript and TypeScript. Um, and then it's a pretty much a one-to-one -one correspondence. So 
what we've done here is pointed it to on the disk, the JavaScript that Enscriptum produced for us. Didn't have to do anything particular for Fable. It's just how the tool works. And then I've been able to push it down through here to get out a module. Um, there is a little bit of um, technology that's going on here um, that you need to spell out what the function is um, in terms of its types in order for it to be easily callable back on, on this side to make it type safe to F sharp. I actually think this would be a really good opportunity for in the same way there's a TypeScript to Fable to have a WebAssembly to Fable. So you'd be able to generate these bindings so they'd come through in a safe way. And then we could start making much easier, safer use of C code and Rust code that other people are building. But it's still quite straightforward. And then we can run this calculation. And as you probably imagine, then I've had to put some uh, confusing syntax into my Webpack. Um, but I got it all working. It's fairly straightforward in the end. Now, so this is, this is a kind of example of how you might be able to do uh, something very abstract like this. Um, but as I was saying, then we tend to work in um, scientific code. And this is just kind of an example of in, instead of passing through numbers, we sometimes want to pass through things like DNA sequences. And so it would be kind of painful if you were restricted to only very primitive types like integers or uh, floating point numbers. Um, so there's uh, an additional project in the inscription uh, tool set called Embind. And what this lets you do is wrap up C++ code. And what this is doing is taking this function, and obviously th these are all examples. It's not connecting through to the rest of my code base. Uh, but you're able to then wrap it up, and it produces uh, wrappers that can do all the nasty n kind of mangling from a JavaScript string into something that the C++ can understand as well. So in a similar way, this is just a straightforward um, C++ code down here um, that could have a very long tool chain and complexity. And people have put some really enormous code bases through Inscripton and got code that will work out the end. But if we wrap it up in a few relatively simple ways, we use these tools, um, we can kick all this off and produce JavaScript um, uh, helper functionality that we can then pull into a Fable context. And I feel like there's this kind of movement going on in the web space where a lot of the client-side interesting libraries are starting to target uh, WebAssembly, um, also more demanding computationally. And I think it would be really useful to be able to make use of those in Fable as well. Now, a lot of scenarios, um, it would make sense just to push all the computers onto the server side. But if you're giving away a free service, or if indeed your, your users have really powerful computers, why allocate hundreds of servers and leave their kind of uh, client compute uh, idle. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to show, just highlight that it's, it's not too difficult to build the C++ as well. That, uh, the way I built this, the kind of ad advised way is to use the kind of Windows subsystem. Um, and so hopefully it's fairly visible. There's basically a command uh, you can run on here. There's instructions for uh, um, uh, pulling down the tool chain. The bits to highlight is that if you are going to try and do this with Reproducer, there's a couple of useful flags about targeting the web and modulizing to ES6 that'll make your life a lot easier um, because Webpack and Fable will actually work with these sets of commands. So this is all on a uh, GitHub page. It will be going live um, later. Um, so if anybody wants to see, take this as a reference, then it'll be available there as well. And I hope other people are interested in making client-side, compute-intensive things work as well.